Today on English Win, we're going to talk about the top of the charts. So hi everyone, and yes, I do have a beard. I'm doing this for a little while now just to see how it works. The top of the charts. Everybody loves a winner, don't they? You like winning. So uh, sometimes the most important thing to pay attention to is whatever happens to be doing really well. This might be the top in music, the top movies, the top TV shows, the top books, or just the top ideas. Well, I'm going to show you several resources you can use to discover the best performing or best selling in different areas. First off, we have music. Now, there's three sources you can pay attention to for music. One is the Billboard charts. The second is Spotify. And the third is iTunes. Now, Billboard tends to have the best of whatever artist is signed to a major record label. Any music that is tracked in physical stores and retailers, like maybe you go to Walmart or Target, some place like that, or maybe in Britain it would be like Tesco, right? So uh, Billboard uh, tracks what is selling well in these stores. Now, also, you can use Spotify. Now, Spotify is a music streaming service, and you can change the country settings to find out what is popular in the country you are researching. If you're researching going to Australia, maybe you want to know the popular music in Australia. Well, you can do that, and Spotify shows you the most popular by how many times its users are playing different songs, right? So however many times that song is played, that will show up as the most popular. And lastly, we have iTunes. Uh, you like the iPad, right? You like iPhones, maybe you have a MacBook computer. Well, iTunes is the service Apple uses for selling television, movies, apps, things like that. And you can go to the music section in iTunes to find out the top best-selling albums or the top selling individual songs. Now the individual songs chart is unique to iTunes. It's, it was the first service to really start doing that. And I'm sure there are other services that track these things, but iTunes is a good resource. So between those three, Billboard charts, iTunes, and Spotify, you should be able to find the, the top selling or most played, most popular music. One source you can use for TV, I'm going to show you at the very end because you can use it for TV and a lot of other things. But one resource I'm gonna share with you now is TV by the numbers. It shows you the ratings, that is how many people are watching different television shows. And also it gives you news on which shows are being canceled, which ones are being extended for more seasons. And then also deadline.com is pretty good. Don't worry, I'll have links to these things. Next, movies. Now, I mentioned Deadline.com. It shows news for uh, TV and movies that are going to be made in the future. Now, another resource I really like for movies is IMDB. It stands for Internet Movie Database. Now, this is a database of most movies that are made out there. It probably includes a lot of Hindi and Bollywood type films as well. But IMDB shows ratings on a scale of 1 to 10, where thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people will, will rate a movie on a scale of 1 to 10. And the average of all those ratings is shown next to the movie title. So if you're thinking about seeing a movie, I recently saw the volume 2 of Guardians of the Galaxy, and when I went uh, to the movie theater, I first checked IMDb and saw that it had an 8.2 on a scale of 1 to 10. So, pretty good rating, but I still didn't really like the movie very much. It was funny, but there were things I just didn't like. So just because something gets a high rating, that doesn't mean that you are going to like it. It just means a lot of other people also liked it. So sometimes there is wisdom in numbers, and sometimes the crowd is wrong. Also, with IMDb, you can see written reviews. People who are fans of movies will write what they think about the movie, and they will be sure to leave out spoilers or let you know 
whether or not they will say what is going to happen in the movie. So that way, you can read the reviews without feeling like the movie is being ruined. I know some people care a lot about that. Next, books. I mean, there's so many places you can find for books. USA Today has a book ranking. Wall Street Journal has a business book ranking. New York Times has its famous bestseller list. But I found the best resource for figuring out which are the best books is Amazon.com. On the internet, online, uh, most books I've found are sold on Amazon. Now other companies try to compete, and they do kind of well. You have Barnes & Noble, you have Apple's iBooks and Google Books, but Amazon still has the biggest share during the time of this video. Now you can find out not only the best books put out by publishers, the ones where authors get a nice contract, but also independent authors. And there's a lot of good independent stuff out there. Now there's a lot of bad independent stuff out there too. So the rankings, uh, this is just like IMDB. The rankings by themselves don't necessarily mean a book is good. You have to read some reviews and they have plenty of reviews on popular books on Amazon.com. Next we have Nielsen. Now Nielsen is a company, it has been around for a very long time. They track people's viewing habits on television, but they've also tracked a number of other things including commercial advertisements, and they combine all this data scientifically so you can see what is the best in different categories. I will link to a top 10 list that Nielsen put together so you can see every week the top 10 TV commercials, the top 10 primetime television shows, the top 10 daytime television shows, the top social media, the top drinks, the top snacks, you name it. They have a lot of good information that you can work with, not only for business, but just if you want to try something new. Now I must tell you, Nielsen is not the best at everything. It's a mainstream source, so it can only track things that are sold in physical stores that are reported or things that are reported to different broadcasting systems. So mainstream, I want to talk to you about mainstream for a moment. Now mainstream is any product that is measured effectively and put out by very big corporations and is popular. Think Ford, think Pepsi, think Britney Spears, think the Black Eyed Peas, think uh, Domino's Pizza, Think uh, J.C. Penney. These are all mainstream brands, right? And uh, a mainstream brand typically starts at the top with big money. So there's people with a lot of money, and then they use that money to get the information or their brands known by as many people as possible. The big thing you need to know about mainstream is it's top down. It starts with people with a lot of money, and they spend that money to reach people like you and me. Now we have its opposite, alternative. Now, alternative is the opposite of mainstream in that it starts out less popular, maybe starts out with a little bit less money, and it doesn't start top down, it starts bottom up. So it will start local with people like you or me, and then it gets more popular over time. Think your local restaurant, family owned. Think independent bookstores. Think of uh, independent bands, maybe a local rock band. Or instead of a big mainstream news like CNN, you might have an alternative news, like a journalist who decides to start a blog. These are all alternative things. My question for you is, now that you know about how to find the top of the charts and different things, what mainstream things do you like? And what alternative things do you like? I want to know about them. Please tell me in the comments. Until then, subscribe, check out some playlists that I have here and here, and I will see you later. Keep on winning, English winners. Goodbye.